Hello, welcome to the Gunner Heat PC stream for the month of June. I am Josh Basuido, aka Action Scripter. I am joined by a uh, random member of the mod team who just kind of walked in, don't know what that's about. Um, it's good to see everybody here. We are going to show some new stuff, talk about some old stuff, talk about where we're going. So, uh, throughout this, I will be taking questions from the chat. So if you guys have anything that you want me to cover, drop it in there and I'll get to it. Um, also, if there's any problems with the audio, uh, let me know. Sometimes it's not completely clear when I'm streaming what's coming through for you guys, so feel free to message me if there's any problems. So. Last stream was on the 3rd of May, if I'm not mistaken. Since then, we've made quite a bit of progress internally. We've put out several builds. We're going to do a new build uh, this weekend, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with some small features, improvements. We're still working on the big stuff, which is uh, armor and internals for all the vehicles that are in the vertical slice right now. That's quite a bit of work that we have to do behind the scenes, so we're doing that slowly as we release quality of life patches. Um, things that have happened. We have a ton of new people in the Discord. Uh, we have that uh, that Spookston video and several others uh, of people getting interested in the game, getting exposure. That's been very good for our numbers. And the Patreon is now somewhere around 3,000 a month, which is excellent. That's uh, one of our goals to accelerate development and uh, get on kind of a schedule. So we'll be talking about that soon as well. Um, and thank you guys so much for the support. That uh, that helps us a lot. We've been commissioning new art, new audio stuff. Uh, we're able to do a lot better quality assets with that income. So uh, you guys are making this possible. And uh, yeah, we're able to move this from a one-man passion project into uh, something legit. And that's very exciting for us. Uh, I've been waiting for this for three years, something like that, and uh, we've got other people in on it as well now, so that's good stuff. Um, let's see, one thing that we are working on kind of in the background as well, uh, moving to the latest version of Unity, or at least uh, the latest LTS version, Unity 2019, uh, it's going to allow us to do some extra stuff like uh, better multiplayer support, better control inputs, better rendering. There's uh, the HD render pipeline, the universal pipeline, various things we can do for that. That's a big task, so we're not gonna be doing it immediately, but we've got some of our devs working on it. In the meantime, we are going to continue developing features and we're going to get the gameplay of the Patreon build back to the standard of the public build as soon as possible. Uh, those of you who are on Patreon know that you can't really do much as far as uh, combat in the Patreon build right now. It's more of a driving around and shooting kind of thing, demoing the new models, uh, better rendering. So uh, yeah, that will be eventually at feature parity with the public build, at which point it will become the new public build shortly after that. So there will be no trace of the old the current public build with all the old models, old rendering, that'll all be gone. Uh, we'll be replacing that with all the new stuff. Everything in it will be our content. It'll be custom made for Gunner EPC. And then the Patreon build will continue to advance past that all the way to vertical slice release, um, which will be free for everybody. Uh, so at some point, when I say vertical slice, I mean uh, there will be a version of Gunner EPC that is for all intents and purposes, a complete game, but it only has a specific setting and a specific limited set of vehicles, which will be 1985 in the Folda Gap, uh, featuring mostly the United States and Russia, or uh, East Germany, I suppose. Um, this is just uh, kind of a way of showing where we're going with the game. Uh, the vertical slice serves to demonstrate our capabilities and our vision 
and then we will be seeking funding after that for developing a full game with multiple other theaters of combat, newer vehicles, things like that. But the Vertical Slice build itself will be free for everybody when it arrives, and we're hoping that's sometime late this year. Uh, let's see. What else are we looking at? Uh, I'm joined in Discord by other members of the development team. I'm going to unmute them now. Um, we've got uh, Kavi, Harry, and Waffle here. So uh, you guys can feel free to jump in if you would like or if you think there's something else we need to cover. All right. So first, let me check for some questions just in case, and then I'll jump into showing off some new stuff. Watch out, there's someone armed behind you. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Um, is the game a grind like World of Tanks and War Thunder, credits, crew, etc.? Okay, so uh, this touches on basically the entire reason we're making the game. Uh, we don't think that a grind is a good mechanic for tank games. And we're trying to make something that is more player friendly. And so we're not going to have a grind like World of Tanks or War Thunder. Uh, Gunner Heat PC is going to let you do gameplay out of the gate. Uh, you know, all the vehicles, or at least uh, in certain circumstances, we're not sure exactly the specifics. There might be still things you have to unlock, but you'll be able to do most everything without any kind of serious grind. And if there is some kind of progression system, it's not going to be onerous. It's not going to be the kind of thing where you break out your wallet and buy premium time or whatever. That's completely out. There's no premium stuff, there's no uh, grind walls, no paywalls. It, we're going to do a full game that you pay one time for, and then probably DLC afterward. You get a big batch of content together for one price. Uh, we don't want to do the same economic model that some of the other games have. We are We have experience with that as players and consumers and we don't want that to be the case for Gunna Heat PC. Let's see. What else we have? What role will machine guns play in the game? Well, the same role they play in real life. Uh, suppression of infantry, shooting soft targets. We're gonna have some things like trucks, uh, you know, emplacements. Uh, so machine guns, the coaxial, the commander's guns, those will all be usable and you'll be able to employ them as you see fit for the tactical situation. Let's see. All right. So let me get this pulled up. We're going to start showing some new stuff. First of all, I've got my development environment starting up here. So one thing that hasn't been shown yet is the new uh, internals for vehicles. And I don't have all of them ready to show here, but I do have the T-55. So as soon as this is ready to start, all right, waiting for Unity. I saw that. Sometimes it uh, it doesn't cooperate with us. Give me a moment. Are we planning to reach out to content creators to promote the game? Yes. Uh, our policy on that is that any content creator is free to make any video about the game right now, but we're not going to actively seek promotion until we have combat back in the vertical slice build. Uh, it's a lot more interesting to see the new graphics and the new models. Um, so, you know, first impressions, that kind of idea. We want, if there's a big content creator, we're not going to actively ask them for promotion until we have a, a more polished Patreon build to show. Uh, in the meantime, if somebody does make a video, like Spookston did, uh, we appreciate that very much, and it helps us with exposure, it helps drive people to the Patreon, which directly accelerates the project, so we're not going to complain about it for sure. 
Um, it's just that we're not going to actively seek it out until a little bit later. Will there be an in-vehicle view seeing the interior? This is something that we would like to do down the line, but it's a lot of work, uh, quite a bit. It's expensive to commission 3D art, good 3D art. Um, it's all we can do right now to just get exterior models done. So interior will be something that we look into once we have more funding, once we have more things done already. Um, it's kind of a wish list item. So the answer is we'll see. I'd like to see it. Um, all right, let me see if Unity is going to be stable now. Unity is not being stable right now. No, it is not. Let me give this one more try. Will there be a smoke screen in the game? If so, how will the AI react to it? Ah, I have some things I can show about this. Let me see. Give me a moment. The answer is yes. Um, I'm just going to need a second to pull this up. Okay, show screen here. All right, so this is an early test that we did of the uh, white phosphorus type of smoke. So as you can see, uh, these grenades, they're launched, they deploy smoke, the smoke kind of rains down. Uh, this is a work in progress effect, just like everything else that I show here. So anything that doesn't make it into a build yet is subject to change. Uh, but this is kind of to show that we are working on this. Um, you know. What else? Uh, fixing of physics and sliding tanks. Okay, so those of you who have played the Patreon build have probably seen that there are bugs of slopes. Uh, sometimes the tanks will turn or slide a little bit when you're at rest. That is an issue with the vehicle physics, the wheels. We are working on fixing it. I had something that I thought would fix it before, but it didn't quite work, so I haven't pushed it yet to the live build, but we are working on that. That will be fixed, uh, you know, sometime soon. No exact timeline for it yet. What else? I'm gonna hope this actually runs this time. All right, here we are. Um, let me pull this up on the screen. Okay. So what we have here is a armor model and an interior model for the T-55 that's currently in the Patreon build. Uh, I put this in kind of a transparent mode so you guys can see what's going on. This is the actual uh, hit detection and physics model that will be working with uh, shots when you engage a T-55. So as you can see, we have the ammo racks, uh, we've got the engine, the fuel tanks, crew, we have various optics, laser rangefinder, weapons, periscopes. Uh, this is all things that you can shoot. Even the fuel lines, you can kind of see them at the whole bottom there. Uh, and you've got the wet racks in the front. They have ammo inside of them. So the fuel will serve as mild protection against fragmentation and uh, it will affect the fire starting as well for ammo hits. But you'll still be able to hit that ammo if you get a primary penetrator into that fuel tank. So like a, a long rod or the main heat jet, uh, the fuel tank won't be able to save it. It's just for minor projectiles. Uh, you've got the optic, you know, gun breach, all this stuff. It's exactly what you would expect, especially if you've played War Thunder or th things like that that have fully modeled uh, like an x-ray view. 
this is kind of a similar idea, but these are the actual components that can be shot in the vehicle. The kill cam, we don't know what kind of kill cam we're going to have, if any. Uh, so far I've just been going with the idea of having the damage report on the screen, if anything, kind of like the public build. But in after action review, uh, if you've played the public build, you can, you've seen we have our shot traces, you can see the exact path fall to fragmentation, things like that. Uh, there will be a similar thing in the new version. We're still working on how we're going to render it, uh, whether it will look like in the public build or be something fancier. I don't know if it's going to be full on semi-transparent mode like this. We'll see. This is a special rig that I activated in this scene just to show you guys what these uh, these hidden models look like. So that's strictly for your benefit here. Um, you might see there's one round here that's uh, APF SDS instead of heat. Most of these are BK5M heat and this one is a 3BM20. Um, in the actual public build you can see you know different ammo when you switch your uh, ammo types they deplete accordingly so in the M1A2 or the T72 um, you can see by the colors and the shapes which ammo is what uh, that will be the case here as well um, in this case I only have one that's different as an example but it will matter what ammo is in what spot because when the fragmentation hits you have a uh, separate hit detection for the propellant, the warhead, uh, the rod if there's a if it's a sabo, and so if a fragment hits your sabo rod and it doesn't hit any propellant, it's not going to ignite anything, uh, and that's also the case for, for example, in the public build if you get a fragment to uh, detonate the warhead of a heat round, that's gonna blow the turret off. But if it just hits the propellant, uh, if it doesn't hit strong enough to get through the case, nothing happens. If it lights up the propellant, you get a fire. But you have all these different kinds of effects, and it depends what exact thing happened inside the tank when you struck it. It's not uh, probability-based. It's not a, you know, some kind of fudged mechanism. It actually matters what the post-pen damage did to the ammo. And that will continue to be the case in the new build, just with better graphics. Um, so that T55 model is the same as the existing T55 tank. So here's the actual tank. So this has that model rigged to it. And if you were to shoot this tank, the transparent model I showed you would be what the damage is assessed on, but for visual, you only see this version. So it's all kind of there and working together. Same vehicle, it's just uh, you see one version and the other one is what actually counts for physical consequences. Okay, so I've got other stuff to show as well, but I need to switch to a different branch of development so I can actually show it. Someone gave you a tip. Oh, thank you for the donation, referer. We appreciate that. Uh, do Twitch donations do go to uh, development as well. So if you don't want to be on Patreon, don't want to do the monthly support commitment, but you do want to do a one time, you can either donate on Twitch or you can donate via the PayPal link in the game's main menu. Both of those go to us as well. We appreciate them. Um, and you will be directly funding the future of Gunner EPC. All right, let me pull up this new feature really quick here. Will there be realistic scenarios in games such as the Battle of 73 Easting? Yeah, how could we how could we not have the Battle of 73 Easting? Uh, we will have realistic scenarios. There will be historical or semi-historical missions available. Um, and it's likely that we will have voting or idea submission for those at a later time. But we have some in mind already that we know people want to see. Uh, 73 Easting is one of them, you know. How could I forget my free abus? We're going to have to have that, uh, that T-72 turkey shoot.
Let's see. All right, checking really quick for any questions. Uh, Harry, we will not feature microaggressions in the game. Thank you for the suggestions. All right. Thank you, Jer, for the donation. I see you. 169. Nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me pull up this other branch here. I've got something in progress that I think you guys will like. Um, While you're loading that up, um, maybe talk about how multiplayer is going to work in the initial stage. Yeah. Okay. So multiplayer. I know we've talked about this at times. Um, I'll cover it again, though. We will have multiplayer. Uh, it's going to be mostly co-op focused, but PvP is a possibility in some mission types. Uh, where it's kind of going to be like squad, where you have uh, it's it's team focused, and then you can do multi crew as well if you choose to. So we're going to have the option to have people in the same vehicle cooperating, taking different roles, but you don't have to. You can also do a one-man tank, just like it usually works. So it's not going to be forced on you. If you want to jump in a, a, you know, the same tank with your friends and yell at each other and try to coordinate things, that will be an option you have. Otherwise, you can just lone wolf it. Uh, but it'll be very team-focused, it'll be cooperative, and uh, it's likely that the team that works together the best as a, a group will probably win. Uh, we're going to focus on asymmetric game modes quite a bit. We're not going to try to balance, force balance everything as far as exact vehicle parity, uh, you know, same numbers of everything, same tiers or types. Uh, that's awkward to balance with realism. So for example, uh, if you have the full the gap scenario that we're working on, you have the early Abrams you have the late M60. Those have thermal sights, fairly good ones even back then. Uh, and then they were facing T80B, uh, T72A, T72B. Those have night sights, but they are image intensifier type, regular night vision, and they are early generation. Um, they need active spotlights to work at long range. They are not able to detect heat signatures. So if we were trying to strictly balance multiplayer just by vehicles using realistic types, we wouldn't be able to do it. The NATO forces would have an immense advantage in low light scenarios just because they can look for thermal signatures and engage better uh, at long range. So instead we would have other ways of balancing, like maybe the, uh, the Warsaw Pact side has more tanks, or maybe they are the attacking force the NATO has a defensive force, you know, we have different ways to tweak the scenario to get it to be interesting and asymmetrical rather than trying to force everything to exact mirrors of each other. We're not going to be doing, you know, uh, M1 IP versus T80U just so that we have, or T80UK, I should say, just so that we have thermals on both sides, you know, we're not going to be adjusting things for the purpose of the game in vehicle selection it's going to be other ways so we'll try to have it still be fair still be interesting but also be historical and believable and that's kind of our philosophy let's see will there be world war ii scenarios there will not be world war ii scenarios thanks for the question harry uh <laughs> there we feel that the main space in the market is uh, for modern vehicles, and that's certainly what I'm most interested in. Um, there are lots of good options out there for World War II tanks. Um, we are unlikely to add any vehicles older than stuff that was in service in the 80s. That's our kind of official cutoff. If a vehicle was in active service in the 1980s, even if it's an older vehicle, um, it's eligible. But just because some people were using Shermans in the 1980s doesn't mean we're adding the Sherman. We're adding things kind of in order of importance. So we're going to add things like the Abrams, the T-72, the T-55. And if you say, hey, uh, this 
random country was using this really old vehicle in 1982, that's great, but it doesn't mean we're going to add it. And even if we were to add something like that, it wouldn't be anytime soon. You know, there are, there are other things to do first. We got to have priorities. So we're doing a modern theme and don't expect any World War II content. All right, let me pull this up back on the screen. So this is a, a development thing, work in progress. We don't have the textures attached to this yet. I usually rig things up with the untextured models and then my artist sends me the final version later. But this is an example of an emplacement. Uh, not every unit that you will control will be a vehicle. Most of them will, but uh, ATGM teams are planned. Uh, potentially in buildings or other uh, static emplacements. We will also have infantry in IFVs, APCs, but you won't be able to control them. So we're planning on having them deployable. Uh, there might be game modes where you can only capture a point if you have infantry do it. So then all the other vehicles will serve to either bring the infantry to the point or guard them while they're capturing. Uh, so you'll be able to send out your squad and then you'll just be uh, engaging the enemy vehicles and trying to stop them from deploying. Uh, but we do have this tow launcher here. And I'm going to show you guys how this works as soon as it actually launches. OK, so this is a unit just like the rest of them. It has the same controls, but you can't drive it. And you'll see that in my HUD in the lower left corner. I no longer have any speed information or gear information. I only have my weapon type and my ammo. And then if I go ahead and aim, I don't have any long distance targets yet, but I can engage at about 600 meters here. So there you go, there's a tow missile launch. This will be animated for reloads and things like that, but uh, for now, just in testing, we have the missile, it guides, it follows the aim point. It's exactly what you'd expect, and it's kind of the same as it works in the public build. Um, if you have the, uh, the tow Humvee, for example, in the public build, it's the same kind of idea but this has much improved models. Uh, I don't have the textures attached yet, but for example, this is uh, kind of what it would look like. Um, the missile in flight looks like that. The launcher looks like that. So same kind of high quality uh, visuals that you have for the vehicle models as well. And then let's get a let's get another view of this. The infantry model, the um, operator here, is going to be replaced. This is kind of the stand-in. Uh, same guy that was on the um, technicals in the public build. It's kind of my placeholder model, but we'll be replacing that as well. Uh, let me slow down time here. So someone says winter camo. Thank you, Pistola Fest. I guess that's a question. Uh, yeah, we will have different camo for different environments. Um, we don't have uh, anything shown for that in the in the Patreon build yet, but we have the ability to do different types of camo. Um, in fact, let me pull up some of that. So we've, we've done some experiments with paint and camo already. Um, let me give an example.
All right, so this is uh, something we were messing with, just being able to change base coat color, for example. And then uh, we also have the ability to do patterns. So here's uh, extremely patriotic M60 camo. Um, and so for things like this, we'll be able to use the same kind of wear layers that are on the regular textures and uh, replace the actual paint coloring seamlessly. So we'll be able to do things like seasonal based camo, uh, potentially customization eventually. Nothing crazy and garish. Uh, it's got to be in the realm of reality. Um, you're probably not going to see chrome tanks or uh, you know, fictional camos, but we're going to have different options. Um, let me see if I can find another example here. We have some stuff that we've worked on uh, as examples of this. So let me pull this up. All right, so here, for instance, are two uh, camos that are kind of relevant to the theater that we're working on. Um, this is the M113A1, I believe, and the M60A3TTS wearing camouflage schemes that they might have had in Germany in the 80s. Um, so there may be options like this. Or if you're doing a scenario mission, the vehicles that you're able to spawn in would probably have their local historical camos already applied, you know, things like that. All right, let me check on the questions real quick here. Um, will this run on my Alienware? Uh, probably. Assuming Alienware are gaming computers like they usually are, yeah. We don't know exactly what minimum specs will be, and that changes as we go. Right now, if you're doing the Patreon build, or even the public build, uh, there are optimization issues, because when we're in development like this, we don't focus all the time on making sure everything is maximum efficiency. We're first looking for functionality, and then we go back and change things and add new options. Uh, for example, those of you who have been on the Patreon build for a while will remember that when it first came out, it chugged a bit and it was pretty demanding. And all you could do was change the Unity default graphics options, which don't do all that much. Uh, but now we have a menu, an options menu, live on the Patreon build for things like disabling motion blur, uh, setting the texture detail, changing the shadow distance, you know, all this kind of fine tuning optimization stuff. And I've seen people get, you know, 150 frames a second on the Patreon build just by having good machines and adjusting their options to fit. Uh, so we're getting better at optimization as we go, and it becomes more of a priority as we approach the vertical slice release because we want to make a good impression on the wider public audience once we make that free. For now, Patreon subscribers, they get our work in progress and our kind of uh, early preview stuff. As soon as features are stable, we publish them to the build. Uh, and if you check the release notes channel on Discord, actually I'll just show it. Um, we've got, uh, you know, every so often we release these uh, Patreon build updates and they go out to uh, everybody who's at the $3 tier or above immediately. If you have the itch launcher, you get these as auto updates. They only upload the patch that's required to change versions. You don't have to re-download the whole thing. If you're not on the itch launcher and you're just downloading the zip files manually, you have to re-download the entire game, but it's still pretty small, 500 meg, something like that. So it's not that bad. Um, but all of this stuff, we've been able to do fairly frequent updates because of uh, the Patreon and uh, being able to work on this consistently. Um, let's see. What else are we looking at here? 
small equipment, tarps, etc. Uh, yeah, uh, we're thinking about different kinds of decoration we can have and options that we can have for that. Uh, we're not, you know, able to provide specifics yet, but we've been talking about this internally uh, as maybe progression rewards or customization so that your tank is a little bit unique among the lineup. So being able to change like what kind of equipment's in the bustle rack, you know, what kind of uh, visible external wear you have, things like that. What else? Any word on your armor and damage modeling? Uh, yeah. So I don't know, Figmo, if you were here when I showed the T55 uh, internals. I can pull that up again, actually. Let's see. Custom vehicle creation. No, that is not likely. Uh, custom vehicle creation is a big order. Uh, the amount of work that it takes to get a vehicle in Gunnery TPC functional is pretty big. There's a lot of different systems that interact with each other. So I would not feel comfortable offering custom vehicle creation as a feature because of just the, the sheer amount of work that it would take on our end to provide that. We're more focused on getting a large variety of real vehicles that you'll be able to choose from. And uh, we'll see what happens. Also, since it's a Unity game, you know, we're not going to be able to stop people from making mods for it eventually. So I guess if somebody was really determined, they could reverse engineer and make custom vehicles. But we're, we're looking into how to deal with modding and how to offer mod support later on uh, in a reasonable fashion, a stable fashion. So for now, no, uh, no official endorsement of custom vehicles and... Uh, we're mostly focused on realism. Let me pull this back up. Talk about this um, armor model again, as soon as I can get it ready. It's always a bit slow to switch branches because we have to reload the dev environment and Unity takes a minute to compile and start up. As soon as this is up and it's stable, I'll show it. M2000, M1 turret, M60 hull. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Uh, it's kind of a funny idea. To, uh, that's Stuff like that would be vehicles that we could add because they are in serial production. You know, the, the M2000 is real, I guess, and maybe somebody's bought it, I don't know. But in general, we'll be focusing on vehicles that were actually used in conflicts or were a major consideration for things that could have kicked off like uh cold war vehicles so stuff like the m2000 is not going to be high priority if it gets added at all and prototypes stuff that's just straight up uh, a paper tank or something that was made you know three examples and that's it they're probably not going to be added at all uh, usually when prototypes are added to tank games it's as a, like a premium vehicle uh, and we're not going to have those, so there's not really a reason for us to offer a prototype. We're not going to be selling them for sixty dollars. You know, it's uh, it, if we're focusing on real vehicles, we're just going to make those. Um, all right. So anyway, for people who didn't see the armor and internal stuff before, this is the T55's armor model and internal model. So this is all the stuff that can be hit. When you fire a projectile and you do, uh, you get post penetration damage. Um, you've got the same stuff as the public build. You've got crew, ammo, fuel. Although I think we hadn't done fuel yet in the public build, um, but that's going to be in here. You've got engine, transmission, radiator. Uh, we've got optics, laser range finder, the spotlight, uh, periscopes. So everything that can be hit here will have realistic effects. Uh, if you get shot in the primary site here, it's going to shatter and you're not going to be able to use it. And, uh, you know, that'd be bad. If you get hit in the gun breach, malfunctions for shooting, you know, get hit in the wet rack, depending how strong the fragmentation is, it might reach the ammo and detonate, it might not. Uh, the fuel will suck up some small fragments, which was the reason they did this ammo rack style. Uh, fuel lines 
chance of leaking, maybe starting fires. You know, kind of what you'd expect. And if you've played War Thunder or games like that, you already know the idea here. If you've looked at the after action review mode and the public kind of EPC build, you already know what we're going for. But this is uh, one of the new ones. This is for the T55A in the Patreon build. So this will be kind of attached to the visual model and going along with it, but you won't be able to see this under normal circumstances. When the tank gets shot, the projectiles will hit the armor, you know, evaluate their penetration. If it makes it through, they'll hit the internals and you'll get the same kind of damage effects that you're used to from the public build. Isn't there a DSHK on top for AA purposes? Yes, we're working on the Dushka, we're working on the NSV, uh, I guess Cord later on, you know, all the, the commander machine guns you'd expect, uh, the M2, um, they're not ready yet, so we haven't put them on the vehicles, uh, except for the M60, which has the cupola machine gun, you know, that's there, it works, you can fire it in the Patreon build and see. Um, but yeah, we'll be adding that. That's just some of the stuff, um, especially because it's common to different models. So, for example, uh, the Russian tanks share a lot of equipment. Uh, so w sometimes we develop those all at once and then add them to all the tanks at once because we can use the same resources internally in the game, the same model, the same textures, and spread it between all the vehicles that use that system. Um, so when the Dushka is done... Everything with the Dushka will get it. You know, uh, same thing for all the other stuff. Um, what else? Which formulas are used for penetration calculation? So our system is mostly based on RHA equivalent, RHAE. I know that's not completely accurate uh, as far as uh, encompassing all the, you know, uh, idiosyncrasies of different types of armor. But we have modifiers for different kinds of composite, different kinds of ammo to kind of address that. Uh, for example, even in the public build, so you have M829A3 in the uh, M1A2 in the public build, and you have Contact 5 on the T90. The M829A3 was specifically designed to deal with heavy ERA, like Contact 5, in that part of it can be broken off without affecting the stability of the rest of the rod. So the M829A3 has a modifier specifically for Contact 5 and other heavy ERA that will allow it to retain more of its penetration power even after encountering ERA. Um, so things like that, like specific uh, design aspects of ammo, we will address. It's not just going to be throwing a bunch of RHA numbers on the armor and throwing RHA numbers on the rounds and saying, okay, this one is bigger than that, so it penetrates. Like, that's not the whole system. We've, we're thinking about all the different ways we can make it realistic without making it too complicated. We can't run full, you know, finite element analysis in real time. We can't do ANSYS here, but we can do some stuff. And it will be as realistic as we can make it in real time. And you can look at the ballistics of the public build right now and see things like... Uh, normalization and different amounts of post-pen fragmentation, stuff like that. Um, and you can see we've got a good foundation already, and we'll be improving it from there whenever we can. Let's see. Any words on the various fire control systems yet? Uh, yeah, so those are in development. Uh, you can see in the public build that we do have fire control systems implemented um, the M60A3 TTS in this build doesn't have all of its fire control system features yet. They're not all live. Uh, specifically, the leading isn't done yet, um, but it will be implemented. Uh, we're trying to kind of do everything at once here, so we add things as we can and as we have the developer time, the, uh, the bandwidth to do it. Uh, but right now, you can do ranging. So let me switch here. So the M60's fire control system is uh, currently fairly good, even though it doesn't have full um, leading implemented. So if I range on this plate and I have my stabilizer on, first of all, 
it keeps aiming at that point, kind of how you'd expect for a stabilizer. Um, but the other thing is it adjusts as you drive uh, for the distance changing, and you can see in the bottom left corner my meter distance is decreasing as I drive toward this target. Uh, so it's always going to aim at the point that I selected, no matter what. And this is playable in the Patreon build, for those of you who have it, who are subscribed at the IFV tier, or sorry, APC tier or above. Um, you can try this out for yourself and see how stable this is. So this is an example of a fairly sophisticated computerized fire control system. The T-72 has its own fire control system as well, but it doesn't have the full stabilization the M60 does. It has something called Delta D, where it approximates a uh, distance change. It can be turned on and off. We don't have that implemented yet. Right now we have just directional stabilization. So it'll stay pointed about where you're aiming, but not at a specific point in the world. Uh, but it does function. It has the uh, the round ready light. It has the range wheel. So as I increase my range, you can see. Let me turn that on, illumination on. You can see uh, it moves the entire reticle up and down so that you aim at the correct place. And then we have some audio as well. So I'll go ahead and give this a shot. So that's one of the new sounds that we're making for the vehicles. Uh, you could hear the auto loader there functioning in the background. I'll do it again. Talk a little bit about our sound design so far. Right, so sound design. Uh, in the past, we've kind of used random sound effects that kind of seem close-ish to what we want but we have been able to employ a sound engineer uh, with the Patreon money, and we are currently making a batch of actual, uh, you know, well-put-together sound effects for the game. Uh, we're going to be doing realistic weapon sounds for each system, uh, full reloading sounds, uh, you know, we're going to be re-recording the crew voice commands. So all this stuff will have some of the features that you expect from games these days, like sound changing its profile over distance or uh, changing the way it reverbs in different environments, this will all be coming down the line because we finally have the budget and the time to implement that system. Uh, it's not completely visible yet in the Patreon build. We just have some of our early kind of test sounds in there, um, like the T-72 autoloader and kind of the internal firing sound for the M60. But this is all coming. It's all being developed, and your support is making it directly possible. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do all of this if you guys weren't uh, engaged in the Patreon and helping us out. So thank you. Uh, Harry dropped a Dishka model in Roundtable, if you wanted to preview it. It's on uh, his Sketchfab. Sure. Uh, let me... Get this switched over here. Let's see. Do you think at one point mobile SPAA might be introduced? Yes. I do think at one point we might have mobile SPAA. Uh, I can't say too much about that because we don't know exactly how in depth we want that or if we're going to do it, but I have a soft spot for the M163, for the, uh, the Shilka, you know, things like that, so we'll see. I would like to add that. Anybody on the uh, actual team have anything to add while I'm looking for this? It's hard for them to get a word in because they're listening on the stream and you're muted in the Discord, so they're not sure when you stop talking. Oh, th well, they're not muted in the Discord. You're muted. Discord. Gotcha. No, I, I can hear in the Discord, I think. All right, boys. Wants to talk. Harry, Waffle, go ahead. Hello? <laughs> Hello, Waffle. Let's see what the delay is. 
Yeah, you guys have been live the whole time. Okay, not terribly bad. Okay, let me show this. Um, here's uh, the dishka that we're going to be adding. There's like a 10 second delay for me. Yeah, sorry about that. That's just uh, part of streaming. In the future, we won't treat the stream's audio as the, the thing we want to monitor. You'll just basically be talking into Discord. Oh, I mean, if you guys like, you can mute the stream and then listen on Discord, I guess. I can always unmute on Discord. Okay, uh, let's see, questions. Harry says, give me my fucking shulka. Yes, mate, we'll see. Um, what else? Plans for a dynamic campaign. Yes, uh, we don't know exactly how that's going to look. We have seen different games do it pretty well. So yeah, that's, that's Harry's Dishka, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we got a NSV in the works, making decent progress, right? Yes, we have an NSV coming as well. Uh, I'm not going to show that just yet, but this is just uh, the Dishka, so you can see an example of stuff that's not added to the vehicles yet, but it's on the way. So anyway. Uh, yeah, dynamic campaign, basically we don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet, but we want to add that. Uh, it'll be a way to make single player a lot more interesting, so stay tuned for word on that. Field repairs. We don't know. Recovery vehicles are cool, uh, but that's another, a whole other side of gameplay that we'd have to develop, and we don't know where they would fit in or uh, whether we want to add them, so I can't really promise anything like that yet. All right. Um, what else? M84 when? Thank you for the question, HRC. I know uh, if anybody can help us add the M84, it'll be you, so we'll see. All right, uh, SPGs, you know, it's very likely. Um, we've been talking about maybe adding the, uh, the SPG version of the, Euro, of the UAZ, because we have the UAZ 469 right now, and we could put the SPG 9 on it without much trouble. Um, can you take the BRDM around the training map without flipping it? Uh, no person currently alive is capable of doing that, sorry. <laughs> Uh, you know, that's just, that's just how it is. If you go full speed, you pay the, the consequences. Uh, what else? Infantry was planned. Yes. Infantry will not be controllable, but there will be situations where you need to deploy infantry from IFVs or APCs, and so they will be functional. Uh. We want that mechanized experience, right? Yeah, so we don't want this to just be tanks shooting at each other. You know, uh, that's not really how combined arms works. So we want infantry. We want uh, air support to be in the area, also not controllable. So don't get your hopes up for uh, you know War Thunder Part Two. But uh, it's going to be around. And it's going to be important in the battlefield all these other elements. So armor isn't going to be the only thing existing. You'll be able to see kind of that, uh, you know, the flavor of different types of forces working together. All right, what else? But yeah, for uh, for art on the AR models, um, didn't the uh, um, BRDM2 get some decent work done? Yeah, the BRDM has a AR model as well. Uh, I'm only showing the T55 right now because it's the one that I rigged up with uh, the semi-transparent skin and everything. Everything else would be kind of like slogging through blender models, and I don't think anybody wants to see that. 
Yeah, yeah, and I think the M sixty A three also had some progress, but yeah. not ready yet. Yeah, they're they're not all ready to show, um, but they're all being worked on actively, and they will be in the Patreon build as soon as they're ready. Uh, so you guys who are subscribed will soon be able to blow up all the vehicles that are in the Patreon build right now. That should be fun. Forty millimeter AGLs. You know, for if a vehicle had them as a primary attachment. Uh, then they'd be added, but I don't know of any vehicles in our time period that had 40 millimeter AGLs as a main weapon. Yep. Uh, canister airburst HE. So HE is already in public build uh, in a limited capacity, and it will be in this one as well. Uh, so, for example, uh, 30 F26, I think, will be the main round for the packed main guns um canister things like that we're looking into adding that uh but we're mostly going to first focus on the primary types of ammunition that would be used in a shooting battle between armor and uh see where it goes from there i'm not opposed to adding all the types of ammo that a vehicle could take but there's you know kind of priority levels to it right so nobody's going to load 40 canister in their abrams and go out to battle that would be you know not a smart idea. I think idea. the the Sheridan would be pretty day baked without the canister, though, right? Yeah, Sheridan was a good support vehicle, so we would have to take that into consideration. Um, we're not going to be fighting tanks with it much, uh, if you're smart, anyway. And uh, so, yeah, so the priorities change depending on what vehicle it is. So that's a good example of that. So canister for the Abrams, not a high priority. Canister for the Sheridan. Yeah, you know, something we'd have to look into. I think I have a picture of a Sheridan around here too. Is it Sheridan Chan? It is Sheridan Chan. So we have a lot of different things in development. Some things are not shown much, but here's an example. You know, <laughs> you didn't hear it from me. There you go. Anyway. What other questions? Chance for APS. Yes. Uh, APS could be overpowered. It could not be. But if it's real, we'll implement it. Uh, the vehicles in our time frame for vertical slice don't have APS. Um, in the 90s, we get passive protection from Stora on the T90. So that'll come eventually. The actual hard kill APS stuff didn't really start showing up until later, the 2000s, 2010s. Um, so that's not going to be in there for a while. But when we do get to that time period, when we add, you know, the M1A2 SEP V2 with trophy or whatever, you know, that's going to be something we implement. We're not going to shy away from actual mechanics of the actual vehicles just because they're bad for balance or something because like i said we'll already have asymmetrical modes we'll balance in other ways so if something had a really good hard kill aps it's going to have it in gunner apc as well random question what's your favorite tank what's my favorite tank Ooh, that's a tough one um i feel like it's really boring if i say it's abrams but abrams is one of my favorites uh, you know, obviously being American, it's like a, kind of a foregone conclusion, almost. But I'd say uh, the T-72, I have a real soft spot for. I just think that's it's such a classic design, and it was a great optimized design for its day. Uh, and it's somehow remained competitive over the years as they've changed the armor. And so just, I don't know, just, just a really clean tank, T-72. So that's going to be my answer. I'm going to turn everyone into Sheridan fans. We, yeah, if we add the Sheridan TTS or something like that, we should be able to do it justice in a way that isn't done frequently because the Sheridan has such a bad reputation from slogging its way through the jungle. Uh, from what we understand, it was a great tank for the plains of Europe and never really got a chance to show that. 
so we'll see. T62 is cleaner. You know what? T62 is okay, but I don't know. T72, it just looks meaner, you know? Clean and mean. T62 is too long, man. It's way too long. T62 is like if a T55 got bought by a limo service and rented out for parties. <laughs> All right. Should we tell them we scan stuff? Should yes, I do have some stuff to show stuff? about that, actually. So yeah, one of the things that we do, and this is something that you guys can help with, uh, we use photogrammetry to 3D scan actual vehicles so that we can send them to our modeler team and make realistic proportions. Uh, and how we do that is we send people out to walk around the tanks take different uh, pictures and videos from different angles, different heights, and it, we put all those images into a computer program that will solve the shape of the model, and it will make a 3D model and textures of that real vehicle. Not immediately game ready, it's way too high poly, it's you know rough, it needs to be fixed, but what we do is we take that model and we put it into the 3D artist's modeling software and they can build the game model over top of it, knowing that it's the correct shape and size, seeing what some of the details are like. And so that helps us ensure accuracy. So I have some images of this. Uh, as an example, there is a M60A3 near me. I went and took some pictures of it. And let me switch inputs here. So here's a, an M60A3 TTS that I took photos of and put it through photogrammetry process. This is a 3D model. We took this and we put it into, uh, or gave it to a 3D artist who then began to make the base shape using this as a reference. And then in the end, we achieved the final model using other references and you know typical artist skills but now we know for a fact that this model is the correct shape and size for an M60A3 because we didn't have to use uh, unofficial blueprints and various photos and try to kind of estimate and piece it together we had the real thing and we had this real reference that we were able to solve from these actual photos so, uh, and this also worked for the T55. Same thing, we got somebody to take a 3D scan of a T55 that was at a museum. I think this one is from Fort Hood. And uh, we built it using that as reference. And so now the T55 in the game, it's the correct proportions all over because we know for a fact we have this solid real world reference. And this is something that you guys can help with. Uh, if there's a vehicle that would be in our time period that we haven't added yet, uh, and you have one parked near you, go and uh, take some videos of it, take some photos. Uh, there are guides on our Discord in the 3D Scans channel uh, pinned. We have some resources for how to do this and how to set it up so that it's the most usable for us. And you can just send us the raw materials we do all the calculations, we solve it, make a 3D model, and then that ensures that our representation of that vehicle in Gunner EPC is as realistic as possible. And that's something that you guys can do tangibly to help us, uh, way more than anything else even. Because we already have people lined up for different roles, like making 3D models, making audio, you know, programming, but we can't be everywhere at once, we can't commission professional 3d scans it's way too expensive um any volunteer stuff that you guys can do for us in that aspect is going to be extremely helpful so just something to keep in mind we definitely noted yeah, in our a big shout out to fern von hark and uh our other community scanners big help yes btr got us a really good one recently yeah the t80 actually. let me see if i can find it actually it looks really good oh you're gonna spoil that okay well, you know, it's only the scan. 
I'm not gonna show a model. I some, uh, if you look at this setting, you can guess that it's gonna be in. Yeah, let me let me see if I can find it though. Any questions while we're waiting? Kavi, you see anything I can answer? No, nothing's coming up. All right. Let's oh, hi, BTS in the chat. Maybe kind of talk about what we're going to be doing for the rest of June and, you know, lead up to our roadmap. Uh, yeah, sure. So we have a roadmap in Discord, actually, but we don't have everything filled in on it. We just had some of the milestones that we're hitting soon, as well as uh, the vertical slice for the end of the year. What we can say is that in July, we're going to have a uh, full like shooting implemented for vehicles. Uh, so all those armor models and internal stuff that we're working on, we'll have that done for the rest of them. Uh, and we'll have it in the Patreon build. So you'll be able to shoot other tanks in July sometime. Um, AI will get a revamp after that. We'll be working toward getting feature parity with the public build in the Patreon build. So actual missions that you can play through, you know, combat taking place. Uh, and then from there, it's a matter of polishing, adding new game modes, working on multiplayer, and uh, building up all these different features all the way to vertical slice. Vertical Slice will be the end of 2020, if all goes well. Um, and at that point, it will be released for free to everyone, uh, whether you are a Patreon subscriber or not. But Patreon subscribers always get things as soon as they're ready. They always get continual feature additions, even after milestones are hit. So when the public build is updated or when Vertical Slice is released, that doesn't mean the end of the Patreon build being uh, an advantage, it continues to get updated after that, um, even when the public build has updates. So uh, those of you who are supporting us on Patreon, we thank you very much, and we will continue to make it worth your time. Uh, Linux and Mac builds? Linux and Mac builds, yeah, we're planning on doing those as soon as possible. Uh, there are some complications in the way that this works where we have to actually get those systems to build them on. Uh, back in the day when it was just me making the early build, I could build for Linux and Mac myself on a Windows PC, but some of the tools we're using now, third-party stuff, requires actual access to those types of hardware. So we're working on that, and we'll also need people to help us test so if you have a Mac or a Linux PC and you want to be an early tester, uh, let us know. Um, you know, Message me on Discord, I guess, and uh, say you want to be a tester. Contact us in Discord. Yeah, just contact us in Discord. Uh, say that you want to help out with the Linux or Mac builds, and we'll see what we can do there. Uh, but we'll be able to release those for everybody soon, uh, so stay tuned. If you don't have a Windows PC, we, we haven't forgotten about you, and we'll be able to cover that. Looking for my T80, I don't see it. Hmm. Let's see if I can open it in Zephyr. Somebody asked about console ports. Uh, we're looking into only PC at this point. Um, console ports are not out of the question. You know, they could happen. But uh, it's, that's an extra licensing issue and extra fees and things we'd have to look into later on. So I can't say yes or no to console at this point. And just balancing, you know. Yeah, Mostly. it's are we making like a, a console game and then porting it to PC? And right. Um, I mean, I don't think we'll have much trouble with the controls because we do have uh, ideas about simplifying our inputs to the point where you can map 
common functions and hotkeys and uh, quick menus and things. So I don't think it's going to be an issue of usability. It's going to be the logistics of actually publishing a console port. Um, that's something that we're not spending resources on right now. We'll have to look at it later. Uh, BTR, you said check DMs. Ah, uh, here we go. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to show a little teaser. So this is a scan that was done by one of our contributors. Uh, we had somebody go out and take video of this T80B in Russia, and then they sent it to us, and we were able to use photogrammetry software to render it into a 3D model. This is not a game model. Um, this is just a reference model. It's much too uh, wobbly on the surface and too high poly to be thrown into a game as is. And also these shadows are baked on. This is direct textured. So we would have to completely remake this as a game model. But the point is, if we make a game model of a T80B now, we don't have to guess where things are, how big they are, what shape. We don't have to worry about the cast armor, which is extremely complicated as far as modeling goes. You have to get it just right. We can build a 3D model directly on top of this scan and know that it's 100% accurate. And that is the real power of having this crowdsourced 3D scanning. So again, if any of you guys live near a vehicle that's in our time period that we don't have yet, and you have a fairly good cell phone or a digital camera, and you can spend a half hour, 45 minutes going around that vehicle and taking video and photos from different angles, as listed in our guide on Discord, you can be the reason that we have a good model of that vehicle. It would be very helpful. Something to keep in mind. Do we have a list of those vehicles that we're looking it's for? It's kind of like, to to clarify, it's we use this instead of using uh, like orthographic drawings. Because a lot of the stuff you get online, like orthographic images, they're either, if they're from a training manual or from a service manual, a lot of the time they're quite uh, diagrammatic and they're not necessarily representative of what the final part looked like. They're more for the mechanics to understand what's going on with the part rather than what it actually looks like. Yes. Or uh, they're fan-made and the fan-made ones, it might as well be an MC Escher drawing sometimes. It doesn't actually work in 3D sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so the line drawings, yeah, like Harry said, they're, they're not always accurate. So we can't just rely on those. Uh, stuff like this, photogrammetry, is gold. Even better than having just photos of it because photos have perspective errors and you have to kind of account for that and estimate things. This is the real way to go. Um, and a, a big company could commission teams to go out to various museums and parks and places and take you know, ridiculously high quality 3D scans, laser scans, stuff like that. We cannot afford that, uh, even if the Patreon money, you know, it's all we can do to just do development. We're a small team, we have small team budget so uh, this is a way that you guys can help us. All right, uh, HRC, don't worry, you'll get your M84 eventually. Uh, I can model a cylinder and put it on top of the T72 if he wants. I think that's the same thing. Right? <laughs> yep, there you go. You heard it from Harry. Um, what else here? Uh, there is a list somewhere of stuff that we need scanned. Uh, I'm not sure if it's pinned in 3D Scan's channel or not. No, it should be. Here's uh, an example. This is a lower quality scan that we did earlier uh, using a kind of a light edition of 3DF Zephyr. Uh, we got somebody to redo this at higher quality afterward. So the picture I showed was done in a different software. 
but this is just uh you can see the floating blue cameras that's uh the locations of every image that was used or that was pulled from video frames and the software solved the model from those can you show it without the texture so they understand why we can't use this in the game yeah um let me see if i can figure out how to do that what are our plans while you're figuring that out what are our plans for kind of like if you had a 3d printer this model and then um left it in the oven for a little while that's kind of what it looks like like all the proportions are right but the surface details are yeah and even beyond that just uh the amount of points of data on it is absurd like a flat plane in a 3d scan could be thousands of points and in a game that'd probably just be a triangle or two so <laughs> yeah it's uh Josh, mate, yeah, this is not asking about air yep Someone's asking about air assets. Okay, so AI controlled air assets are yes. <laughs> We're going to try to add them. Uh, you're not going to be able to fly them. You might be able to call them in. I'm not sure, but you'll be able to be killed by them. And isn't that what everybody really wants in a tank game? <laughs> you can get yeeted by a helicopter from behind a hill somewhere. That's gameplay. <laughs> 10.3 I wish I was better at Zephyr so I knew where to turn off the texture on this I think I have a picture of an untextured one somewhere though hold on What else? Notice no Abram scans on the list. Do you guys have them? Because there's one near me I can track it. Uh, Hybers, if you are able to get a good scan of an Abrams, it's always appreciated. We are working on the Abrams model right now, but uh, if you're able to provide a good scan we can always use that to verify and validate stuff so yeah go ahead someone asked if I have a fist v. fist v remind me what the fist v is again uh it's basically an m901 without a toe in it it's a fake m901 what I think What's... it's like an artillery spotter isn't it uh it's hmm. like for lazing targets but it, it uses the same hammerhead thing that the the, the the ITV has. Ah, and they're asking about the Chadley as well. Okay. That's... Oh yeah, the Fist Fury, right. Um, What's up with that Chadley? <laughs> the Chadley. So, if you're asking about the Bradley itself, um, yeah. Let me pull up a picture. It's being worked on. There it is. That's one of the work in progress shots. So this was done off of, we have scan reference for this, right? Yeah, it's a particularly nasty scan, but it's enough to sort of get the base. Yeah, so the, the early model Bradley is interesting because there's not that much out there for resources. A lot of Bradley scans and Bradley photos and stuff are done for the uh, M2A2, M2A3. This is just the M2 like the really early one, the first Bradley to hit Germany. Uh, and it's harder to find reference for this that's not line drawings or all taken from the same angles. Um, but we're doing our best. I think we got a pretty good shot at it. And uh, this will be in the game when it's ready. We could do the fist V, but I think we'll do the ITV first, right? Yeah. We've got ITV. Um, so many spoilers. Well, it's the stream. We gotta make it worth their while. <laughs> so 
seriously. Because if uh, if you can get everything just from hanging out on Discord and shit posting, then what's the point of showing up on Twitch? <laughs> Don't devalue shit posting, my man. We love our shit posters, sort of sometimes. Beam's favorite channel. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have memes and off-topic muted. No way. <laughs> what else do we got? Uh, you guys saw the toe already. I'll put it up again in case you didn't. Um, I did a reload animation. Do you have that? I don't have that implemented, no. I mean, there was a... I made like a cube, I think. Like... Yeah, the, I saw it in Unity. It, it works. I just haven't rigged it up yet to actually happen. I've just been flexing. Oh yeah, we can't uh, can't forget the Russian one. So this is the nine uh, K eleven, the spigot. Uh, this is going to be an emplacement as well. I don't have this one in a testing environment yet, though. And we won't do the weird thing that War Thunder does where you can still control the Sakura stuff when it's not in view of the site, right? Yeah, no. Uh, we're going to do our best to make sure it's realistic. Uh, let me pull up the Toad demo again because I see someone asking about realistic ATGM ballistics. Um, do we have them? I will show you in one moment. Hi, Closet Monster. Just rip the M2 model from War Thunder. Yep, I'm sure we'll get right on that. That won't backfire for us. Can't go tits up. We can't speak out 9K111 name on Twitch. Mm -hmm. It's not pronounced the same, but just so I don't risk it, I always say spigot instead. What, the fago? Yeah, that one. <laughs> thanks, thanks, mod admin, for, you know, taking care of that. Bassoon, yes, that's what it means in Russian. Alright, given my dev environment, a moment to load here. So for those of you who haven't seen, uh the tow missile in action. I'm loading up this test scene that has a early version of it for preview. Okay, so here is our ATGM boy, untextured, just the rig test. But there you go, there's tow missile and let's shoot it. It's a controllable unit, just like all the other ones. Uh, it doesn't have any speed or gear shifting HUD info because it doesn't have mobility. It does have the weapon hood though, and it can be controlled. And let's go ahead and fire a shot. There you go. Tow missile. It just like any other semi-automatic command line of sight missile, you can guide it with the crosshairs. What does it look like in third person when you shoot it? Like that. Asking about uh, 
juicy soldier killing. I think he wants to know what the RHA equivalent of a human skull is. <laughs> juicy stuff for killing soldiers, huh? Are you asking about gore or uh, stuff like that? We're definitely going to have killable infantry, but um, I don't know yet what we're going to have as far as gore. Uh, you know, blood impact decals or, uh, you know, it, it's complicated to do things like dismemberment. It might be too much work for what we get out of it. We'll see. That's all up in the air. Doom amounts of gore. Yeah, probably not doom amounts of gore. <laughs> How about armor thickness related stuff that we've been working on? Like damage models? Uh, what about it? I just showed the T55. Mm. So that's, it's the same as it worked in the public demo. Just uh, we're making new ones for the new vehicles. Was well, the variable thickness stuff, I think someone asked before about the castings and how the imperfections will work or whatever. Um, yeah, variable thickness will be a thing. We're, uh, we're working on it for cast armor. So like the T-55, the M-60, we have the actual armor thicknesses modeled and it will depend how your shot hits them. Uh, that'll determine the effective thickness at that point. Kind of like uh, War Thunder added that last year, I think, um, where some of their armor is variable thickness and it's evaluated at the trajectory that you hit it. We'll have the same thing. Uh, we're working on that system right now that requires us to do our armor models carefully because we have to actually model the physical dimensions of the cast shells, but we are working on it. It will be in place. M865 versus a deer on thermals. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, multiple hits cracking the armor. I don't know yet if we're going to do armor durability. And if we do, it's not going to be a health bar for the armor, like in certain other games. Uh, it would be a localized weakness, and we'll see if we want to add that or not. I'm not sure. What else? The sound of crew members screaming in pain when they get hit. Man, uh, Captain Ballistic, you're just uh, you're giving us all the cheery topics, aren't you? Thanks, buddy. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see. We'll see what we'll the what we do for that. Is a good uh, compromise. Isn't yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gonna be PC teaming up with Roblox. You heard it here first. Uh, what else? All right, um, so if anybody has any last minute questions, uh, feel free to ask them. I'm gonna pull up the public build real quick and do some gunnery just to show uh, example of fire control systems and impact for those of you who haven't seen it maybe. Well, the information that we use for- Someone asked if we're gonna have Leo ones and twos in the yeah, we're going to have leopards. Uh, Germany hasn't been added yet, West Germany, but we will, of course. That's very important for the Cold War scenario. Um, and before somebody asks, British will also be added. Challengers, that type of thing. Uh, we're getting to everything as we can. We have a list. It's starting with the U.S. versus uh, East Germany and Russia, and we'll work our way down from there. It'd be nice to get the uh, Dutch and Belgians and stuff in eventually as well. Yeah, we'll see what we can add. So this is the public build. Um, this is, everyone can play this. But uh, just so we can get some fire control system stuff in here. Very old. Yeah, this is old, very outdated, but just showing it off because everything you see here 
will have its equivalent in the Patreon build as well, or better. We actually have a better thermal system in the works. We have a guy whose life mission is to make good thermal shape. And that's all he's <laughs> yep. gonna do. And when he achieves it, he's, he's gonna just jump off a cliff. Cause I can die that, yeah. Yeah, thermal's in progress. Uh, we've had some interesting uh, realizations. Uh, Fullmet's has been helping uh, kind of the research, like uh, brushed metal, polished metal. Um, this is actually very reflective in thermal. So it, it tends to look cold, even though it's actually hot. So stuff like that uh, can be expected, but probably won't be super common. But uh, yeah. I think the coolest feature that w that you were working on was the um, the engine actually, like the engine compartment actually heats up, right? Like yep. different parts of the vehicle. Yeah, like separate heat sources. Yeah, like a. Uh, in Arma, if you fired your main cannon, uh, it would heat up the machine gun too. Uh, we won't have that. Uh, and depending on how much you move the vehicle, the tracks and wheels will heat up too. So, separate heat sources. Closet monster, we call it a uh, crew. <laughs> <laughs> can finally LARP a boomer in the 80s, yep. You sure can. Collateral kills? Uh, you can't get collateral kills in the current build, but there's, uh, I suppose that can be done. We can have ex big explosions throw off frag. I think you can already over penetrate, can't you? You can dump uh, one of the Abrams rods like through. Oh yeah, you can definitely shoot through multiple vehicles in the current public build. Let me look at the uh, after action here though. See if I can find some ammo hits. Yeah, here we go. Um, so this is what I was talking about early in the stream where it matters what you hit specifically with frag. Uh, these ammo pieces, we've got a mix of Sabo and heat, and then the propellant charges as well. Uh, this vehicle, I believe after this shot, it had a deflagration of fire, but no big explosion. Uh, wait a minute. Penetrated throwing charge, extra propellant, struck heat round. Yeah, so it didn't... Oh wait, damage heat round. This might have blown the turret off then. Um, because the heat round getting detonated by Spall would actually have caused a big explosion. Um, if it hadn't, it would have just been fire. Let's see if I can find yeah, one that the hit. Ammo carousel is a beautiful flower of explosion. Yes, it's the emergency ejection system. Um, here is one that penetrated propellant, but it mostly just hit, like here, uh, right in the middle there, that piece of frag hit the rod of that saber round. So that one itself, I think that went on the damage list as struck APFSDS round, that wouldn't have done anything besides ruin that round. Um, if this tank caught fire, it was because of that frag going through the case of the other APFSDS charge and it has extra propellant back there in fact it does say penetrated extra propellant in the damage log so this would have caused a fire but because it hit that specific zone of that ammo piece and this is in the public build keep in mind so this is live you can use this the system that we have for this this level of detail is going into the patreon build now uh you know it's in development so you can expect at least this much uh, realism out of your 
shooting in the new build. Would be nice to have short animation for this. Yeah, it would be. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Right now, the snapshot system for time, it only takes freeze frames at important events. And then we kind of render one moment of it for AAR. It's possible I can do something for showing an animation, but that's more complicated and it's not a high priority right now. We'll see. As we get toward the release of Vertical Slice, things like that will become considerations, like making things fancier that already exist, doing kind of uh, more polished versions of them. Right now, we're just focused on getting all the features of the Patreon build done uh, to the level of the public build so that we can make that the new face of Gunner Heat PC and not have these kind of uh, old graphics, random models, that stuff. Bob Semple Easter Egg and Vertical Slice, is that a question or did you find one? <laughs> hmm. All right, let's see. We've had reports of Bob Semple sightings, haven't we? We have had reports of Bob Semple sightings. Um, obviously there's the public build. It has a playable Bob Semple if you can figure out how to do it. And then uh, the Vertical Slice may have something as well. Among other things. Yeah. These guys had a bad day. <laughs> you can see how primitive the public builds T55 is, both inside and outside, compared to the new one in the vertical slice. And this is uh, what was shown earlier in Unity, but just the internal version of it. So much more detailed, much more realistic than the old T55, you can tell. We've got some other internal stuff, don't we? The BRDM, I think. Uh, we do, but I don't have it pulled up to show right now. Oh, yeah. Well, you have hydraulics modeled. Uh, I'm not sure. It's a research obstacle to find out where all the hydraulic system lines went in a vehicle. Uh, and I'm not sure how much that factors into fire starting and stuff like that. It's possible that we would determine something like that would be worth our time later on. Uh, right now, we've just decided on fuel system and, uh, you know, big explodey stuff. Uh, hydraulics, we'll see. I'm not sure. Yeah, and there's kind of a design challenge with that because, you know, you might want some way to indicate to the player what's happening. Yeah, th this so. starts to get into both a resource problem and also how does it affect gameplay. So, you know, I don't know about hydraulics. We'll have quite a bit already modeled though, so it's not like you'll be able to shoot a tank and nothing will happen, you know. I wanted to get cherry juiced in the Sheridan, my man. Yep. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna wind it down here. So if anybody has any last minute questions, go ahead and ask. Otherwise, uh, thank you all for coming and we will have another stream next month. Hopefully we'll have a lot more to show in the uh, tanks shooting tanks department. Do you support Linux? We will. Uh, we're working on the Linux and Mac ports right now. As I said earlier in the stream, uh, we are looking for people to help us test that. And it's probably sometime this month we will be releasing Linux and Mac support for the Patreon build. Are you guys going to the shooting range? Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> we we have all this stuff out just for decoration and memes, but uh, we are going to shoot it. I need to test out that RPK. It's, uh, it's going to be fun. OK. What else? 
what is your favorite steak? You know what? I don't know enough about steaks to have an opinion on that. I just know that if they're dry, they suck. How much did the AK-74 run to you? Kavi, how much was the AK-74? I bought it for uh, 700. It's now currently worth 13. Well, nice. Stonks. I, I miss when 74s were 700. <laughs> Can you do the next stream under NVGs? Uh, you guys wouldn't see anything different except me sitting here looking like a dork with a helmet on, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is Harry single? Great question. Uh, all right, I see we've we've got all of the important questions out of the way. <laughs> so uh, that was the last one. That was the last important question. Yep, that will leave everybody to ponder that one. The, the singleness of Harry. Okay, if I set everything up correctly, this VOD will be available for those of you who weren't here the whole time. If I didn't set it up correctly, sorry, <laughs> I'm still new to Twitch. We'll figure it out, uh, but hopefully it works this time. The first stream, you only have a few clips remaining because some people clipped. Uh, sorry about that, you know, we're learning. Um, okay. And that'll be all. So again, thanks for coming. Uh, if you guys like what you see, support us on Patreon. That's what's making this possible, and we appreciate you. We will see you next time.